Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the In Between demo. If you're interested in checking out the game, uh, supporting the devs, I have links in the description. Why? I, I, I can't remember what happened last time. <laughs> That's my bad. Hasn't even been that long. But here I am. Uh, we're calling Leon about. Micah was still thinking about the missed call, too, absolutely scrolling through nothing as he stared aimlessly at his device. Oh, right. We missed a call. I don't know if we should call that number or call Leon. Sure, we call Leon. But also the mystery number. <laughs> Bad decisions always made at the start of the game. Let's go! Micah stared at the missed call. Something about the number drew him in, captivated him. He knew that he had to speak to this person now. Why, he didn't know. He just had to. It was important. He thought on that feeling for a moment, but in the end decided to trust that gut feeling. Just as Micah went to hit the call button, his phone started to buzz. He jumped up in surprise, nearly dropping his phone. Now the face. Barely catching it, he caught sight of the caller ID. It was the same number! And this time he was able to uh, and this time he was available to answer it. He rushed to check his desk where he kept his notebook just in case. Oh no number. All right. Uh, hello? Ooh. Ah, good evening. Mr. Malcolm Riley, I presume. Malcolm. The right family name, but who was Malcolm? May I ask who's calling? Forgive me, where are my manners? Suspicious. Arthur Harris, administrator to the estate of the late Gregory Riley. I'm calling about the last will and testament in regards to the unresolved inheritance to one M. Riley. Gregory Riley? He heard that name before, but where? Micah had yet to respond, but the man continued talking. You're a hard man to find, Mark. Oh, sorry, I seem to recall you're preferring to be known by your middle name, Edwin. Oh! Is that still accurate? Oh. <laughs> oh. Those are the O's of my feelings. Forgive me, it has been many years since I last saw you or your father. You. You. You or your father? Those words pound in my head like a drum. Who was this person? He said Edwin. Edwin Riley was the name. <laughs> he said Edwin. Edwin Riley was the name of his father. He was sure of that. He swallowed hard. His whole body felt heavy, like it was suddenly constructed of lead. All of his attention was directed to the voice he heard through his phone. You or your father? Edwin, are you there? I, uh, I'm not Edwin. Edwin's my father, but... He's been gone for years. Wait. For some reason, he decided against telling him that. Maybe I could find out more from this man if I pretend he was still here, but just not available. He swallowed again. It was almost painful how anxious he was. He's not available at the moment. May I help you with something? Edwin's son? My. You must be a little my Kalia, then. But Has it really been that long? Wow. My Kalia? My Ka- My Kalia? <laughs> I don't know, words. It was technically his full name, but no one called him that ever. Not even his aunt, who was a stickler for proper language and names. In fact, he didn't have any recollec recollection of anyone calling him by that name. How did this man know it? <laughs> you know my father, then? I do indeed. I haven't heard from him since your grandfather passed, however. I've been trying to get in contact with him about the estate for quite some time. And of course, I finally find a lead, and it ends up being his son. Then, could you tell me more about the estate? Um, I shouldn't really. Micah struggled not to curse out of frustration. But since it's taken me so long to find your father, and you are technically an M. Riley, I see no harm. <laughs> it wasn't being very clear, it just says M. Riley. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, such a polite young man. Gregory would be proud indeed. <laughs> I have the afternoon free. What say we meet for a late lunch and go over the details I have to share with you? 
Um. I would very much like to see how much my dear friend's grandson has grown after all these years. That sounds fine. We could meet at the Merriment Cafe if you've heard of it. Very well. Merriment it is. 2 p.m. tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. With that, the answer. With that, the answer was over. <laughs> that's not. That's not the end. With that, the call was over. Micah's heart raised. He had finally met someone who knew his father and his grandfather too. Micah looked at the call log on his phone to make sure he wasn't imagining this. Oh shit, Leon! <laughs> oh shit, Leon! <laughs> he didn't know it was. <laughs> He didn't know if he had the mental fortitude to take on socializing right now. He had so much to think about. His father and grandfather. I should text him. ay 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 Text the boy. Text. Text the boy. Hey, man. Sorry about this evening. I left my phone at home. And something came up. Sorry, I should have messaged. Sorry, I should have messaged you before. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Everything all right? Yeah, it's all good. Mm, just family stuff. Nothing special. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh, well, I uh, guess I'll let you get back to it then. Yeah, thanks, man. Oh my god, I'm a burp. Ooh. I'll catch up with you later, okay? It was special, of course. Nothing about it wasn't special. He just didn't want to say anything before he knew for sure what it was about. The typing appeared and disappeared, appeared and disappeared. Leon seemed to have something to say, but in the end, he never said it. Oh, oh, what would happen if you actually messaged Le a call called called Leon? Sleep did not come easy that night, and when it did, it was the same dream: the hazy figure smiling at him as they played in a puddle. Oh, who are you? Why can't I remember you? The room was still dark, the night air heavy as Mike awoke. No longer able to tolerate the shallow sleep of the night, he laid awake staring at the ceiling. Agonizingly slowly, the day broke and the room started to lighten, chasing away the last wisp of the haze-filled dream. As the sun rose, so did Micah's anxiety. The phone call from yesterday was finally sinking in. He might find someone... Eh. He might find something out about his family today. For some reason, I can't read today. <laughs> Finally. It had been 17 years since he came to live with his aunt. 17 long years of not knowing. 17 years since waking up in that hospital bed with no memory of how he got there, what ha what he'd been doing, how he ended up there, and how who, who he was with. <laughs> Every time he tried to ask about his parents, his aunt would shut down the conversation or change the subject in some way. But today, she couldn't stop him asking. Pacing around the apartment was all he was capable of at the moment. It was all he could manage. It in the morning. Man, I wish I could wake up at that time. Not in the morning. Oh, dear boy. At 10 in the morning. Hmm. Not even going to do anything to preoccupy your time? 11 a.m. Enough was enough. There was only so much pacing one man could do. <laughs> with his mind still filled with thoughts of that lawyer, Micah decided that he should just head to Merriment early. Anything was better than pacing back and forth any longer. He'd made up some excuse about wanting to watch Thomas in the kitchen or practice a new latte art. Something, anything would do. As he walked through the doors of the cafe, Micah desperately tried to calm his quaking heartbeat. Quickening heartbeat. Quickening. Quickening. <laughs> if he spent some time messing about here for a while, it would surely start going quickly, right? 
Micah recalled something about Thomas trying out a new menu item today, too. A worthy distraction. Eventually, thoughts of the meeting began to melt away as he watched Thomas cooking in the kitchen. Before long, he found himself sketching the meal at different stages of preparation. What he first thought would be a useless skill... <laughs> I know how to read! What he first thought would be a useless skill, his food drawings had become somewhat useful. They were used at, on Mary's menu. Oh. He checked his phone nervously. 125. Oh. Time went so slowly at first, but sending, but spending time in the cafe drawing and chatting to Thomas actually made time go much quicker than he expected. He took a deep breath. He felt much calmer, thankfully for thank thankful for the distraction this had become. Why don't you go get a table in the dining room? In the dining room? Someone's got to make sure these are actually edible. <laughs> I don't think anything you could make would be inedible, but I'm not one to turn down the famous Thomas's cooking. With a smile, Micah took a seat at one of the empty tables, and Thomas brought out his newest experiments. They looked and smelled delicious. Oh, da 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 da. Before him, Thomas placed two dishes. Don't show me food pics. Ah! Da. <laughs> One wasn't really a dish as such, but the most indulgent looking milkshake Micah had ever seen. <laughs> Topped with whipped cream and chocolate and chocolate powder, yeah. Complete with a long spoon and a spiral straw. The second looked like a pie. The outer pastry woven into a lattice filled with berries and syrup. It smelled divine. Hidden beneath layers of pastry was a secret that made this more than just some pie. Micah stood transfixed as Thomas was creating creating was this masterpiece this dessert had a layer of cheesecake inside the pie crust and under the berries couldn't wait to try it oh i want that <laughs> oh, carrots on a tool before he could dig in however thomas brought out a third dish three there's more where did this one come from a special treat a mischievous look spread across the chef's face. He gently placed the dish in front of Micah, a smile plastered to his face. Now you may eat. Pizza? Dig in. Ooh. Oh, is it even possible I can eat all this? You'd better. You hurt my feelings otherwise. Do voice acting is A+. Plus. <laughs> Micah examined the new meal with interest, trying to work out what secrets this one, ha this one held. Oh. Pizza? Try it and find out. <laughs> oh, I keep cutting him off with the laughing, I think. Micah happily brought it to his lips and tasted it, and of course he wasn't surprised. It was perfect, just as Thomas cooking always was. This dish was particularly unusual, though. It looked like pizza, but once he started to eat, he realized it was actually a delicate noodle dish adorned with cheese and pepperoni. It only looked like a pizza. Incredible. You couldn't help but be a little envious how amazing it would be to be in Thomas's position, coming up with all kinds of new recipes. Still, he was thankful for the meal, if not a little curious as to what he did to deserve it. As if seeing the question mark pop up above Micah's head as he stared at the spread in front of him, Thomas laughed. <laughs> I know you don't really celebrate it, but I wouldn't be a very good chef if I didn't whip you up something special for your birthday. Aww. <laughs> but more than anything, you looked a little down and anxious. You come here on your days off when you aren't feeling so good. <laughs> Aww. It's his safe space. It's his little place where he can relax. Aww. Does he? He hadn't really thought about it. After a moment, he realized Thomas was right. It's how he got the job in the first place. What's on your mind, kid? <laughs> a lot, apparently. I... I have a meeting here soon. I... I think I'm about to find out who my father was. Well, that is indeed cause for a delicious meal. Oh, uh. It is delicious, isn't it? <laughs> of course. Micah scoffed in response, a smile playing on his lips. He had nothing to worry about. Thomas was one of the best chefs Micah had ever met. 
He trained in some upscale restaurant overseas until he married Mary and settled into their little cafe diner. They both loved it here, and Micah always thought what a lovely couple they made. They treated him like family. He would always be grateful for their support and kindness, even if he felt like he could never pay it back in full. Thomas still cooks incredibly fancy things sometimes, but then... But he enjoys comfort foods above all else. Of course it's delicious! You don't even have to ask! <laughs> the food didn't make him... Uh, didn't. It did. <laughs> the food did make him feel better, too. Something about a stomach full of his cooking set his mind at ease. It was amazing how a good meal could serve as a distraction. He looked down at his phone. To a p.m. 2 p.m. Finally. Once again, his nerves rose, despite his best effort to keep himself calm. The bell of the door jingled, and in walked a tall, dark-skinned older man with white hair and a pressed button uh, business suit. He looked the part of a lawyer, that was for sure. Micah gazed at him expect expectantly. I know how to words. Standing to greet him. Although the man looked as if he matched the boys, he wondered if his assumptions was correct. Mr. Harris? Ah, you must be the young Mr. Riley. Yes, sir. That's, uh, that's me. Oh, that's me. He fumbled over his words a little, his nerves getting the best of him. My, how you've grown. You were just a wee tyke when I last saw you. I bet you don't remember me, do you? I don't blame you. You were very shy, hiding behind your grandfather's legs the whole time. <laughs> he chuckled, one of those nostalgic and heartwarming chuckles, like he was reliving, <sighs> like he was reliving a treasured memory. Michael swallowed hard. Shall we sit? Here goes nothing. Can I ask what he was like? I've lived with my aunt Caroline since I was young, and I don't have many memories of my grandfather. Or my father. Hmm. He seemed to be deep in thought. Micah held his breath, wondering if he'd blown any chance of finding out anything. After a while, Arthur decided. That sounds like Caroline, that's for sure. She never did get along with her family. It stands to reason that she wouldn't speak of them much. How was it that you came to live with her? Uh, my papa died. <laughs> Honestly, I... I don't really remember it very well. As a child, I got into a bad accident of some kind. When I woke up in the hospital a few weeks later, Aunt Caroline was there. She told me I would be living with her from then on. I remember that. I've never seen Gregory more concerned about anything in my life. Arthur folded his hands and rested his chin. His eyes closed in deep thought. Uh, Caroline. Uh, what was he like? My grandfather. If you don't mind me asking, that is. He was a good man, strong-willed and fierce, kind and compassionate. More than anything, he loved his family. They were the most important thing in the world to him. Oh, he sounds nice. I just wish I remembered him. Uh, but he was an adventurous one. Caroline never really approved of her father and brother. Mm. Yeah, I kind of got that impression too. But you said you had something for my father? Ah, yes, yes. How could I forget? Micah steeled himself. He wanted to know what it was, but was also afraid to know. Arthur unlatched his briefcase and from it pulled a bound document followed by a wax sealed letter. I have had these in my possession for five years. I have been seeking out Edwin to pass them on to him, but as his son, I am confident that Gregory would approve. Mm. He slid the documents towards Micah, who couldn't help but stare. With a shaky hand, Micah pulled them towards himself. An immaculate scripted title, old but well cared for. A deed. This property deed. It looks like a property deed. It says this property deed right there, boy. <laughs> His eyes scanned the deed before moving to the letter. Address to one M. Riley. He took a deep breath and opened it, barely managing to stop his shaking hands. My dearest Micah. My heart jolted. Micah. It was addressed to him. His eyes went wide and he looked back up towards the lawyer. 
where he was standing a moment ago was now empty space. What? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. We're going places. <laughs> yup. Lipsies it up. He was gone. What? Where? Where could he have disappeared to that quickly? Panic. Panic. The panic. <laughs> Panic flared up in Micah as his eyes darted from the litter back to the empty spot in front of him. He shot to his feet, eyes dashing around the room. He was nowhere to be seen. How can someone just vanish? That face, though. That face, though. It's such a good face. Thomas gave him a quizzical look from the doorway to the kitchen, crossing his arms over his chest. Uh, hey. That man I was with. Did you happen to see where he went? He left while I was reading. The tension in Micah's bodies was the bodies. The bodies. <laughs> the tension in Micah's body was making him lightheaded. Hmm? See who? Oh shit, boys! Uh, Mr. Harris, he he was just here. Oh ho Hmm, sorry, Mai, I didn't see anyone. It looked like you were alone this whole time. I thought you must have been in a phone call. The blood in Micah's body seemed to become ice cold and freeze. Alone. Well, alone? How? How could I have possibly been alone? He looked back at the table, the documents neatly laid where he left them. They didn't vanish. They were part of his they weren't part of his imagination. These were real. How could the men who gave them to him not be? There must be some kind of mistake. You feeling all right? You look like you've seen a ghost. Maybe we have. Ghost. Oh, these are making me nervous. That was the last thing Micah heard as his senses all went black. Oh, what? Did he faint? Oh, no. Oh, no. Am I going to have to click here? Click. Oh. Oh, everything hurt. His back and his shoulders, his head and his eyes. Every inch of him felt like he'd been taking a beat. Had every inch of him felt like as if he'd taken a beating. Micah tried to sit up, surrounded by a vast darkness, but the effort made his head spin. He collapsed back down to what could only have been the ground, but even that he wasn't sure of. Soft. Where was he? What happened? He tried to think, but his mind felt dull, like trying to listen to someone speak. While underwater, everything felt so far away, eternally distant. Every time he tried to move or sit up, electric tendrils spiked through his head, making him wince with pain. He gave up accepting his fate. He'd just sleep wherever he was. The faint sound of panic that reached him faded further and further away as he lost consci consciousness once again. Darkness. It was so dark. Micah felt scared. Scared and alone. Why? He took a deep breath. The air smelled sweet, like honey. He couldn't tell if his eyes were open or not. In a place like this, he couldn't tell anything. The panic rose. The spikes of pain through his head were getting worse. Then, the tiny jingle of a bell and something soft touched his face. He froze in fear. Swat away, touch it, do nothing. Um. I don't know. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. I'm not gonna leave you on a cliffhanger again with the choices. We'll touch it. <laughs> the feeling of the soft touch felt somewhat familiar. Micah reached up and slightly touched whatever it was. Soft, fluffy, fur. He let his hand travel through the length of the body. It was covered in fur. A cat? What would a cat be doing here? Where even is here? He became startled as the mystery myst mystery creature. <laughs> he became startled as the mystery creature rubbed its face against his. A calming purr drifted from its from his chest. Distracted as he was, he hadn't noticed that the longer this creature spent affectionately nestling against him, the less the pain uh, the less the painful the feeling in his head became At words <laughs> his senses were coming back still dull but no longer excruciating the feline pulled back and Micah was able to sit up 
He saw it. A wow. A pretty kitty. It radiated, it, it radiated powerful energy, but it, but its appearance, you would never expect it to be as affectionate as it just was. Its eyes fixed on his as he stared at it. A keen intelligence mixed with what seemed to be concern. It followed his movements with its, its eyes. Then with a switch of its long tail, closed the gap with an elegant pounce coming to rest on Micah's lap. Those eyes that stared at him, so vibrant. They were beautiful. Lost in thought about how pretty the amethyst color of the feline eyes were, Micah was surprised when the creature stretched up with its front paws on its on his ch chest. Long sentences! I can't! Uh, nuzzles against his cheek and licks his forehead. His senses filled with the scent of honey. Micah raised his hand to his forehead, slightly touching the spot the feline had just moved away from. It licked me? Where the cat had liked a warmness spread throughout his body, he suddenly felt much better, his body not hurting anymore. As he examined himself, he once again heard a bell. Micah desperately reached out, trying his best to call out to the despairing cat. Wait, don't go. No voice left his throat and carried through the darkness. The only light he had was those eyes. Without them, everything was dark once again. He closed his eyes. He was suddenly so tired. Faded sound reached Micah as he stirred to con consciousness once more. His eyes slowly opened. Taking up his entire vision was the blurry face of his best friend. Micah! Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God you. You're so worried. Look at your face. Look at your worried, precious face. <laughs> Ugh, not so loud. My head hurts. It was only then... It was only then he realized. It didn't. His head didn't hurt, actually. It didn't hurt at all. He reached up and touched his forehead. For the first time in a long time, his head didn't hurt. Not since... Not since that cat. Is it even possible for pain to be licked away? <laughs> nah, that's stupid. <laughs> Micah stifled a laugh looking up towards Leon. So dumb. Me? <laughs> I can, can you imagine like your best friend? You were super worried about them. Like like fainted in like a restaurant that or like at the cafe they work at or whatever. <laughs> and they're like, man, my head hurts. And then they like have a moment of like, wait, hold on. And then he, they look you dead in the eye. <laughs> and they're like, man, so dumb. <laughs> and it's like, excuse me? Me? <laughs> <sighs> no, not you. Hey, Leon? <laughs> Freaking hell. I love them. <laughs> yeah? Thanks. Seriously. Yeah. <sighs> Ooh, Leon's face went bright red. Oh my god, I don't know why that made it be so funny. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. Gu has a crush. He glanced away shyly, awkwardly fiddling with his tie. Finally. Uh, Micah? <laughs> oh, my throat. <laughs> hmm? What happened to you? What did happen to me? I was hoping you could tell me. Well, before we get into that, we're going to stop here for today, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me if you're interested in this game. Links, description, Patreon, Kof, their Kof, Kof, no, Kofi, <laughs> I'm getting there, is also in the description. And a thank you to this month's patrons and members. Thank you, thank you so much for your support. It means the world to me. And if you're interested in supporting me uh, or getting early access to videos or, early, uh, or exclusive access to other things, I have a Patreon and a Ko-fi. Those are in the description. Hopefully I'll see you there and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.